Hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to the Beep channel. And today the lecture that I will deliver is an invited talk. And the invitation is actually come up from uh, VVB Engineering College, Rajkot. Uh, the major program is a AICT IEST refresher program. And the program will be focused on the computational method for analyzing, modeling, and predicting the behavior of the exploitative and or applicative uh, biological system. I, Dr. Dipankar Ghosh, Assistant Professor, uh, Microbial Engineering and Alkal Biotechnology Laboratory, Department of Biosciences, JIS University, Kolkata, will deliver a special talk on the application of metabolic engineering and the advances that have come up with the advent of artificial intelligence. So this is the basic plan that I'm trying to explain and emphasize on. There are major six segments up there. So the segment one will be considering the emphasis on metabolic engineering, synthetic biology and system biology as an outline. Uh, as I believe you are all are beginners on that particular topic of scenario. Second segment B will be focusing on the concept of microbial cell factory for the value added biomolecule generation followed by application of metabolic engineering for value-added product generation. Then we will try to discuss about in the segment D on the bioinformatic tools or the systems metabolic engineering and synthetic biology uh, in terms of standalone software applications or the web server-based applications, followed by emphasis on artificial intelligence, special emphasis on the, meta the machine learning in the field of metabolic engineering, and we will see how different AI tools, they are ameliorating the, the scientific intervention in the field of metabolic engineering, especially system metabolic engineering. We will try to conclude our legislation with the future outcome. So that's the overall scenario and brief summary what we are going to discuss in this particular session. So let's talk about the, the first very important section that is on emphasis of metabolic engineering, synthetic biology and systems biology. So how you can able to define metabolic engineering? So metabolic engineering in the practice of optimizing genetic and regulatory processes, mostly anabolic and catabolic enzymatic reaction within a viable cell, which is a metabolically active to increase the cell production in terms of biomass, as well as in terms of the desired target product or the biosynthetic capability for certain substances, that is the value-added products that we are looking into. Similar way, the synthetic biology is also a kind of multidisciplinary area of research in the field of science that seeks to create a new biological parts, the components. So these biological parts mostly considering the operator region, promoter region, sequences, ribosomal binding site, open breeding frame, CDSS, upstream regulatory sequences, and termination uh, sequences are also getting involved. And that will ultimately constitute the microbial cell factory is a device and that will consider as a system or to redesign system that can already found in nature or sometimes they are semi-synthetic in nature. System biology is kind of combination of this particular different forms of area biology. Here the computational and the mathematical analysis modeling of complex biological systems are going to be considered that will allow to optimize and simulate the efficacy of the microbial cell factory, especially metabolically engineered strain or incorporated synthetic biological cell. The holistic approach to study the interactive impacts of the biochemical reactions, their corresponding enzyme, their kinetics within the biological system that will allow to alleviate the productivity of your design target molecule. So this is the synergistic pictorial presentation, which shows that how system biology, synthetic biology and metabolic engineering, they are merging with each other. Usually system biology considers the mathematical model that will allow to mimic the biological system as a viable cell or metabolically active cell form. Synthetic biology is the application of computational design for forward engineering of genetic circuits, biological component system or the viable cell. Whereas the metabolic engineering considered the computational analysis of metabolic network, especially flux balance, the how fast or how slow the reaction rate will be continue, how you can able to measure the flux balance analysis where you have re-engineered or redesigned a new metabolic pathway or 
you make a semi reorganization or reconstruction of existing batteries. So this is more a clear view how these three different fields of research area they are merging and ultimately give rise to establishment or really construction of the synthetic biology where the system biology will allow to understand the natural gene network computational science is allowed to make those different inputs into model and analyzing data set it could also include the omics database systems metabolic engineering will allow to uh, rearrange or reconstruct the different segments of the gene network and ultimately will allow to improve or also switch over the product productivity of your desired target molecule and ultimately these three different field of areas systems biology computational science engineering of metabolic network will allow to give rise to a new field of science of at least the synthetic biology the second uh, segment b that will be considering and here we are going to emphasize on conceptualization of microbial cell factory and the biorefinery approach for valorization of bioadded molecules so microbial cell factory is an approach for bioengineering with consider the microbial cells as a production facility in which the optimization process largely depends on the metabolic engine usually the microbial cell factory used for many applications in the industrial biorefinery approach or industrial microbial technologies. Here, simple substrate will be added that will allow or alleviate the growth of the microorganism, the organism which carry out different activity, different activation and functionalization of synthetic pathways by the involvement of different enzymes. Here you can see enzyme A, B, C, D, multiple cofactor involvement and upregulation of metabolic pathways ultimately will give rise the product along with some basic side branch pathway to get activated. Microbial cell factory is an approach for bioengineering which considers the microbial cells as a production facility in which the optimization process largely depends on the metabolic engineering. You can see here that the major optimization or major advent of metabolic engineering is to use the different uh, waste biomass resources they do carry out the hydrolysis of this particular complex called polymeric substances and turns them into the simple monomeric form or oligomeric form and they will get imported by different influx pump and then they will participate in different metabolic networks which are uh, synthetically added or they have been knocked in and knocked out or knocked down within the system and then final product will be getting outside by the exporter or the influx pump and then the product will be available in the spent fermentation ground that can easily get separated out from the spent liquor within the bioreactor, where the microorganisms have grown and developed the biomass. So this is a very simplistic and holistic uh, pictorial presentation, which has clearly been shown how microbial cell factory to carry out their function. And it's quite clear from this diagrammatic presentation is that the native E. coli, you can see on the uh, left hand top corner, it shows it's a low ending strain. Now, these are the basic strategies which will allow you to make your low yielding strain into an engineered high yielding strain. So they are involved multiple processes, multiple segments like glucose transport, the central metabolic pathway, functionalization, aromatic amino acid pathways, the branch pathway uh, minimization or degradation pathway knockout, the transport pathways, and also activation of the PTA, ACK pathway to be get activated that will allow to egg cell or that will allow to influx your product to get out from the cells. So this is the basic uh, modification of the related pathway. Those are being associated with the metabolic engineering within, which can allow to convert or biotransform into a naive E. coli oil strain to an engineered E. coli towards high productivity. So this is actually the concept of microbial cell factory in a much more deeper way, where the substrate can be converted into product with the help of or by considering the different rate limiting steps, different precursor and cofactor supplies, they will try to slow down the competing pathway. They will allow to accelerate the cofactor regeneration system. And also they can allow to optimize the JC strain, the strain which will allow to get more tolerance against the product that you are trying to look into it. And ultimately entire pathway or enzymatic step needs to be get simulated, needs to be get balanced in it that will allow to carry out the maximum productivity of the substrate towards the product.
So uh, this is a, a pictorial presentation. Again, it will showing that uh, how you can able to establish the system's metabolic engineering. So there are three different approaches needs to be get considered. One is the pathway focus approach. The strategies which are including the cell, uh, the carbon source utilization, because of enrichment, byproduct elimination, degradation, blocking, transporter engineering, cofactor engineering, that will ultimately allow to simulate and activate the metabolic path, followed by the systems biology based approaches, where the omics based approaches are going to be considered, like considering genomics data say, transcriptomics data say, proteomics, metabolomics, and plaxomic data, along with the in silico simulation approaches. And finally, the most important approach is with the evolutionary approach. So that will allow to carry out some strategies associated with the enzyme evolution, metabolic evolution, adaptive evolution of the strain. And the techniques are going to be considered that will allow to elevate and accelerate the process for evaluation with the help of the facts and the biosensor technologies. So this is actually the overall strategy and the procedure of the system metabolic engineering for the bio-based production of chemicals and the materials that will allow to carry out the strain development, allow to carry out chemical being produced, then the scale up fermentation, followed by recovery purification of the process. If you can able to get your product to be get produced more, then the recovery or downstream processing cost will automatically get reduced and that will allow to make your process more feasible and sustainable towards commercialization. I know this is a very typical and very complicated structure but one by one by considering product selection, the whole strain selection, pathway construction, evolutionary engineering, pathway optimization that we are going to discuss in great detail that will allow to carry out and that will allow to produce more product uh, that will allow to carry out more feasibility towards the commercialization of the system. These are the different segments that we have been explained in the previous slide with very complicated representation. But now we will discuss one by one that will make you more understandable and that will be more comprehensible for you. So first is the product selection. So what kind of product you are trying to get? That is the final product. And what kind of substrate are you going to choose? And you have to have some kind of primal knowledge like what kind of intermediate or precursor that could also be get generated or they have a, might have a chance to get accumulated within the system. So that, that is usually based on the different biological, biophysical, chemical phenomena, including bulk chemicals, fine chemicals, polymers, materials, biofuels and natural products, including nutraceuticals. So the step could be one step fermentative process or it could be a multiple steps but there. Multiple enzymatic networks have been working in an orchestrated manner that will ultimately give you higher substrate conversion efficiency and end up with a higher final product accumulation. Second one, the most important concept of the strain engineering is the host selection. Suppose you are trying to produce ethanol. Suppose you are trying to produce propanol. You have to always make sure like whether you strain your whole strain, where you are introducing different genetic engineering approaches. They can have a higher level of tolerance that will allow to sustain a higher concentration of this target molecule that you are going to achieve. So that is called the tolerance. So if your whole strain, they do have a higher level of tolerance for your target, definitely the whole strain will be the versatile strain and that will be definitely advantageous of course, and that will be a most suitable and best case strain that you have ever chosen. The next important segment is the pathway construction that will allow to introduce different heterologous pathway. That means you can took, uh, you can consider few circuit from the plant, from different animals and try to functionalize in the high yielding or high growing cells like E. coli or Saccharomyces or in any other forms of microorganisms where you are trying to functionalize the de novo pathway construction and that will alleviate your target product accumulation within the system. Similar way, if you want to adapt your strain under the stress conditions, the evolutionary engineering could be a very important aspect where you can carry out the adaptive lab evolution. You have been growing your strain within your target product for several generations that will make a lot of stress-induced alterations in the genotype of your post jc strain and that will somehow make your enzyme system very advanced and more uh, catalytically active compared to the natural enzyme and that will call the enzyme which are evolved enzyme 
and that enzyme will carry out much better functioning when they are directed uh, towards the adaptive laboratory evolution. Then you have to optimize the pathway. Now, here you can consider a few basic con considerations like genome scale metabolic model. You can consider plasmid-based engineering. You can consider regulatory RNA-based engineering followed by genome editing using CRISPR-Cas9 lambda recombinase system. Even you can consider the basic assembly, the Golden Gate assembly technologies, including the lambda red recombination system, where you can incorporate plug and play different component of your open reading frame or the cluster of differentiation, including RPS, including promoter, including gene of interest and origin of replication terminators that will somehow uh, regulate uh, the up and down regulation of your protein expression or multiple protein expression uh, in case of a pathway when they, you have been designed and you have optimized at a certain level. So, Whatever the strain you have designed, whatever the synthetic pathway you have functionalized within a JC strain, which having high level of tolerance, high biomass productivity, most important thing is how you can able to improvise them towards the biorefinery. So the concept of biorefinery involves four different processes. The first upstream process that converts the renewable biomass into the fermentable carbohydrate. So that is the first upstream process where you can utilize different forms of waste biomass, different lignocellulogic biomass that can easily be get hydrolyzed into the monomeric or oligomeric hexose or pentose residues. Now, this pentose and hexose residue can get entered within the metabolic, central metabolic pathway of an organism in the second upstream process that develops a microbial strain that have a capability efficiently producing a desired product by incorporating different enzymatic networks, either the network involves in the natural pathway or the artificial pathway that you have designed followed by midstream processes that cultivates the microorganism and produces chemicals material of interest but there is a high possibility to, to get also accumulation of the side product undesirable product the question comes like how you can able to uh, reduce down the byproduct generation that's why the downstream processing comes forward over here that can recovers and purify the design so the question comes if you can have higher productivity of your target molecule then the purification downstream processing cost will automatically get reduced although none of these four processes is really important the second upstream process of developing microbial strain is the most important uh, primordial as it determines the overall efficacy of converting the raw material to product. Since the microorganisms isolated from nature are not optimized for the production of the desired un or non-natural products. So metabolic engineering and the strain chases engineering come into and play. Metabolic engineering can be defined as the purposeful modification and reconstruction, redesign of cellular network, including enzymes to achieve the desired objective with a suitable and in a balanced way. The third segment of this presentation is focusing on the application of the metabolic engineering. Like what kind of uh, application, what kind of value added or valorized product you can able to come up with where you have been applying the science of metabolic engineering to improve your strength, improve the metabolic pathway or improving the enzymatic activity that alleviates the higher substrate conversion towards the high product generation. So that's the thing that I'm trying to say, like value-added product generation. So major application is highly focusing on to improve the tri level. That is the tighter rate, that means productivity and also the molar yield of your desired product by also considering the high level of substrate conversion efficiency. So this is very typical, uh, very complicated structure, which I've been showing here, how the different central metabolic pathways are involved and the pathways, if you can able to control over them, by different up and down regulation of global mega metabolic regulatory protein expression level like RPOD, SOXR, SOXS, RPOS, FADR, ICR, RPOS and RPOS molecules, CRA. These proteins are the regulatory proteins which controls over the central metabolic pathway like pentose phosphate pathway, the glycolytic pathway, and also the tricarboxylic acid cycle. And if you can control over it, uh, metabolic engineering, one very important application will allow to produce more volatile fatty acids and value-added essential amino acids, including acetate, citrate, lactate, iodate, and L-lysine and l 3 In a similar fashion, this pictorial presentation has also been emphasized how metabolic engineering has been applied to alleviate the nutraceutical generation. Where the simple carbon source, they have been converted 
with the advent of engineered microbial host, either in a monoform or in a co-culture form, in a balanced optimized pathway of functionalization, and that will end up with different value-added nutraceutical molecules, including the beta-alanine, gamma amino beta-aric acid, water saline, absyl lexin, uh, resveratrol, these kind of molecules, which has really been converted by simple substrate like glycerol, glucose, and cyclose. So these metabolic pathways are very central pathways that actually present naturally, and some pathways are getting introduced within the system that will ultimately give you lycopene, beta-carotene, and astaxanthin production. These are high value in the field of nutraceutical science. Similarly, the metabolic engineering will also allow to carry out the engineer pathway that will alleviate the flavonone anthracyanin in biosynthesis, which are the most essential nutraceutical production in E. coli. In similar fashion, uh, benzyl uh, quinoline alkaloids can also be another very important field of application where metabolic engineering has been carried out in E. coli and saccharomyces to alleviate the production of this benzyl quinoline and alkaloid productions. Even in the drug production, metabolic engineering plays very important role. You can see metabolic engineering have introduced and also altered different competing pathways to accelerate the biomass productivity and also the productivity of synthesis of atrimicic acid or atrimicinin, which is an anti-malarial drug and also taxol anti-cancer compound by altering by engineering saccharomyces cerevis in E. coli, most suitable model microorganism. And this is another layout of application of metabolic engineering in the field of biofuel technology. Different forms of biofuels, including liquid and gaseous biofuel, like methane, hydrogen, propane, can also be get generated. Even more value-added commodity chemicals can also be generated from the lignocellulogic biomass using methanogen, purple non sulfur phototrophic bacteria, algae, facultative model microorganisms. So here we have done lots of work where you can end up with the hydrolysis of lignocellulogic biomass towards the bulk chemical, fine chemical, long chain alcohol, fatty acid, pharmaceutical, nutraceutical compound, fatty based alcohol or jet fuel and alcohol by following like lysis and PC cycle, the central metabolic pathway manipulation or reconstruction. Now the fourth important segment is the bind home agricoles. What are the basic tools are there that will control over the system's metabolic engineering that will allow to make more reconstruction of the metabolic pathways and how you can able to identify or fetch out most potential non-natural enzymes. Those who are not doing the function in nature, but you are improvising them in such a way that it can able to alleviate the product generation in much more faster way. And that is a basic rationale, how you can find out the tools that will allow to control and switch over the system's metabolic engineering cell. So this is the basic chronology and trend of the system's engineering, metabolic engineering, and it shows that how you can able to and how the trend has been switching over. Usually the trend has been started from uh, 1990s, where the H in plain Jane has been first round of sequence in 1995, followed by the sequencing of the E. coli in 1997. And that sequencing will allow to get a lot of information about the genetics different nucleotide sequences and that ultimately will allow to establish the genome scan model on age in plan or in E. coli. So in that particular scenario, different other online systems and online repositories has been established in 2003. And this is of note that actually summarizing this big data set that has been redesigned from the lactic acid producing E. coli. Different registry of standard biological parts has also been also been reposed, uh, they are also getting summarized and they are also getting stored within the online system like the BioCs, MetaCs, EcoCs, this kind of system. And finally, after 2009, different biocompartments like ribosome binding site, the level of expression like operator, promoter, upstream regulatory sequences, the termination sequences, they are actually get summarized, they are actually get sequenced, they are getting uh, found a library in the online repository system. So that will allow you to give the PWM model of promoters that will allow to carry out the dynamics of the strain design, co-culture and modeling, and also come up with the synthetic eukaryotic genome that has first, 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 first been established by the Craig Venter group by making the yeast artificial chromosome in 2000. So this is the basic chronology and trade how the normal biology has been shifted, the paradigm has been shifted towards the metabolic engineering, bioengineering, systems biology, synthetic biology, and systems metabolic engineering. 
So the bioinformatic tools, that's why they are the building block for pursuing the systems metabolic engineering. That approach allowed to successfully construct the potential microbial cell factory to establish a sustainable biorefinery approach towards a high value added biomolecules generation. So these are the basic components uh, which are playing and they are working in the background, like reconstructing metabolic networks, visualization of the metabolic networks. And there are different softwares which are also being available, like Blast, Seed, Biosys, uh, Cake Pathways. You can easily go on through all these uh, references, all these uh, softwares which are available online, so that will allow to carry out the construction of the metabolic network. Similar way, when you have designed the metabolic network, you can easily allow to carry out its visualization by using different uh, online server-based softwares and some standalone software that you have to install in your computer. But these are very useful too. You can run through when the deliberation will be finished if you're highly interested. The third and fourth very important segment where the computational tools are playing important role like manipulating biological models and also how you can able to carry out and you can maximize the metabolic flux towards the target drug. There are a lot of software which are also available, which will allow you to carry out the in silico manipulation of these biological models, including ThinkerCell, Genius, well, DNA Star Laser, Gene RBS Calculator, with Vector NGI, GeneCAD, Pusher, VNA, RNA, WebSuit, and the Gene Designer. Similar way, metabolic flux analysis can also be done by using different uh, standalone and the online server-based uh, software like FBA, Opnot, Cobra, MoMA, or Opflux, Cellnet Designer, and also Fiat Flux, and also the system biology research tool that is very, very interesting to carry over. But mostly, you need to have a computational idea. You need to have an idea about the computational programs, how you can able to synchronize, you can able to simulate different algorithms that will allow you to give you the correct and near to be perfect results while you have been applying the flux LS analysis software. Then the most important segment uh, of this uh, particular segment is the pathway prospecting and the permission uh, for selection. This approach involves the developing techniques to efficiently search for identity, the exogenous reaction pathway. That is the permissive host, which are highly tolerant to the toxic metabolites. They can able to tolerate the intermediate accumulation burden within the cell. Followed by the post-structural network analysis, it deals with the understanding the design of metabolism, locating enzyme targets to determine the most likely enzyme targets, considering the RNA and the protein level in the viable cell. These are the different softwares, uh, integrated medical genome, opt strain, opt not. They can also be highly useful for pathway prospecting and pharmaceutical selection process. Similarly, Copasi system biology workbench the sizes and the tinker cell are also involved for post-structural network analysis as such. Finally, the culture optimization is very important and this reason includes the non-suitable host and low substrate availability competing metabolic pathway. These three different constraints needs to be overcome while you have been able to come up with the culture optimization. So culture optimization helps to use the metabolic model with the primary intervention of maximizing the growth rate or the growth rate of performing FDA analysis. So that, that's very interesting too. Culture and pathway optimization that will allow to consider the effect of the culture condition. Here you can able to identify how the different components of the pathway can be get activated, can be get influenced by different physical chemical parameters. Most of these tools it will allow to assess the growth under various culture conditions by applying the flux analysis like a BA platform can be used towards this end. So these are the different softwares like GrowMatch, Biomed Toolbox that will allow to carry out the culture and pathway optimization in in silico approach. However, validation needs to be required that will give extra round of weightage of your experiment or in silico omic analysis. Finally, the toxic intermediate optimization. It involves considering the toxic intermediate during the pathway optimization. It helps to perform the statistical analysis on the metabolomics data set in an effective like phenotypic trade with the metabolic level. So these are the certain uh, softwares or server that are highly serving uh, this purpose of toxic intermediate optimization like MetaP server or the MELT DP. Now the question comes, whatever we have learned so far on different metabolic tools, different metabolic conceptualization, how we can able to apply. There are two case studies I have included here, the paper we, which I have published from Imperial College London. And these are the two different case studies. So first case study is the target-oriented one. 
Here, the system biology will allow to paint the pathway and potential enzyme prediction towards the anti-cancer drug methyl jasponate biosynthetic pathway. Now you can see this is a simple uh, schematic diagram, the, the name biosynthetic pathway of MJ and JA, which are present in metal model plant Arabidopsis thallium. But the question comes if you want to functionalize this very complicated pathway, you may not be end up with the higher productivity of methyl jasponic acid because lots of enzymes are missing in the prokaryotic platform. So what would be the solution? How it can be get resolved? So here system biology plays a very important role. Metabolic engineering plays a very important role. So these are the auto execution algorithm which are simulated. Some are extended metabolic space retropath, equilibrator, web tool, MRE tools. They are coordinated where you can input your molecular structure, target molecule, and it will end up with different emitters like your pathway ranking, pathway informations, pathway construction, reaction information, including different enzyme and enzyme classes. So while we have applied these algorithms and we have tried to execute and functionalize this algorithm in a simulated manner, we have started that the steric acid is the most important and most useful substrate which can convert into the oleic acid. And finally, this oleic acid is converted into the methyl jasponic acid. And you can see that here red color shows that a lot of enzymes, putative enzymes has been also pointed out. And it also considers and also give an idea about the free energy change to determine which enzymatic steps are the red limiting or they are thermodynamically unstable. So if you come to know these informations, you can easily reconstruct and redesign the shortest high rank pathway and get functionalized within the suitable JC strain like E. coli, Saccharomyces, etc. So this is another layout of the target oriented workflow the phylogenetic analysis. Now, when we are getting different enzyme belongs to different enzyme class, you can easily allow to carry out the clarification. So you can make GLAD1, GLAD2, GLAD3. That will allow to identify which enzyme and the enzyme which is closely associated with the known enzyme having some known function. That will allow to understand out of maybe 100 enzyme, which enzyme you are going to choose and functionalize to become a part of your reconstructed metabolic pathway. In the similar fashion, this is the target-oriented case study too, which shows that how system metabolic engineering approach will allow to redesign the metabolic bypass and identify the novel enzyme that will allow to improve the cholesterol lowering precursor like BTO biosynthesis using the crude glycerol as a basic feedstock. So this is the name pathway which are present in E. coli as well as in the Arabidopsis thaliana, where this entire biosynthesis of BTO has been converted from the d xylose z arabinose on malic acid as a precursor, as a feedstock. Now the question comes, if you want to functionalize this pathway in other microorganisms, in any other host, that will be difficult to functionalize all these enzymes. And their enzyme post-translational, post-transcriptional modification may also be very, very difficult to get balanced. So here system biology web tool workflow will allow you to predict and also reconstruct the design of biosynthetic metabolic pathway where you can use MRE web tool algorithms, MRE web tool or FMM web tool that will ultimately uh, in cooperation with equilibrator web tool, they're working together in an automatic execution approach. We can put your queries like host organism, source target and component that you are trying to biosynthesize and functionalize and it will end up with the pathway ranking Maybe it will give you 100 pathways. You can easily choose which pathway is the best one by considering thermodynamic constraint, pathway name, foreign enzymes, and also the homology model completing native reactions and also native enzymes. So by applying this particular approach, we have already predicted and designed the putative synthetic metabolic network that easily converted the glycerol into the 1, 2, 4 butane triol of BTO by considering, by giving a lot of information about the putative enzyme, enzyme classes, free energy change, and also different uh, intermediate like methyl glyoxal, lactyl dehyde, or d fucose And that will allow you to understand if this methyl glyoxal or lactyl dehyde will accumulate more than that could be toxic to the host where you are trying to functionalize this pathway. So this kind of information, multidimensional facet has been come up with while you have been considering this metabolic pathway reconstruction and utilization of this different standalone and the web-based servers algorithms. Now the question comes, what should be the target and why? Why does more and high throughput have automation requires? Can artificial intelligence be merged with systems metabolic engineering as a bio part? Now the responses are quite simple. Yes, metabolic synthetic pathway design and uh, the potential enzyme finding 
quite possible and that is the major target and yes it does require in near future to handle big data set mostly the data set which are coming from the omics service like proteomics transcriptomics genomics and metrolomics and all sorts of things yes ai can also possible to stay in its infancy but it could be possible now if you can able to merge the artificial intelligence with the systems metabolic engineering biopatch that definitely going to make a big revolutionary approach and it will make a big and super automation that will helps us to understand more and more in deep learning of this entire system in the viable metabolically active microorganisms so that's why we need to emphasize on the artificial intelligence and the machine learning in the field of metabolic engineering so let's talk about what is and how you can able to define the artificial intelligence artificial intelligence enables the computer and machine to mimic and problem solving and decision making capabilities of the human mind with automation so this pictorial presentation has quite surely showing that the artificial intelligence has mostly considered and they are dependent on machine learning approach neural network and also deep learning process that will allow to make the decision making and more super automation of this execution of this entire algorithm to end up with more informative information value added information there now you know ml is a very important segment of artificial intelligence so machine learning is a sub discipline as well we are familiar with is an artificial intelligence and which attempt to uh, emulate how a human brain understand comprehends and interact with the world so the machine learning will allow to coordinate between the biological and the computational language in such a way that will allow to make decision more robust more sustainable and more useful and that can easily get validated by the experimental approach so machine learning algorithm defines the learning in a narrow way the ability to predict the response so response are mostly considered the target compound production protein concentration of the pump like enzyme concentrations the mrna pool within the system it can also be number of uh, other parameters are considered like the intermediate accumulation toxic metabolite accumulation so these are the different responses that actually come up and that will be get easily predicted by with the help of the application of machine learning algorithm in the biological systems that will also alleviate the next level of cross validation of your inputs and how they are getting exposed and they are getting giving different forms of responses so here uh, the another important segment is the artificial neural network ann so artificial neural network is mimicking our biological neural network you can easily see from this diagrammatic presentation that lot of input uh, Uh, parameters are the independent variables are there they are passing these impulses from the dendritic cells from the cell body from the myelinated axons and then it will go to the synaptic cleft where the axon terminals will give you the response of the output similar way the major function here is the cell body where the different algorithms are running in the background and a lot of inputs like physical chemical parameters different biological parameters they are acts as a inputs and these input values will get processed by different uh, regression equation different algorithms and then it will carry out the activation and functionalization simulation of this process and ultimately give you the output so outputs are none other than the reconstructed metabolic pathway including information about different enzyme systems and that will allow to make different bio parts to get functionalized for large scale or super automation in the near future And finally we need to know like how these algorithms are working in the hidden layer so that is a nice pictorial presentation which shows that how deep learning will allow to depict a significant interest in the ai field in obtaining the further inspiration from the biomimicry by users and the dynamic simulation of the algorithm you can see that there are plenty of omic data sets are available in the big data set Maybe the next speaker will allow you to make more familiar with how the omics data sets are working, and they will also emphasize more on the algorithm computational parts, the program parts, which are working as a hidden layer. So omic data mostly considered as an input layer, input one, input two, multiple inputs are there from DNA level to the RNA level to the protein level to the metabolic level to the metabolic level to the flaxomic level, and these all inputs coming from the omics data set, a big data set. they are going to the algorithm part which is the hidden layer and this ultimately carry out the computation automation based execution of the programs and 
make different forms of functions and the functionalization activation and ultimately it will give you the output layers these are the design pathway optimized pathway finding out the novel enzyme enzyme classes and also including thermodynamic constraint including free energy change enthalpy change entropy change of the entire ribo cell and how they do carry out the biomimicry and involves in the dynamic simulation of the algorithm so this is a, the fate of the ai artificial intelligence on the metabolic engineering to provide super automation which is required nowadays because otherwise it might possible to handle all these big rounds of data set that we are available in the online repositories in different institution and different research institution as well so here it clearly shows that how the machine learning can easily get amalgamated by the synthetic biology metabolic engineering system to execute super level of automation by experimental planning smart sampling model interference and the design rules here you can carry out lots of different applications from building side to the testing side to the learning side to the design by following experimental design by the robotic microfluidics by high throughput proteomics data set and also the validation of the data analysis and this is the way how you can use the artificial intelligence in conjunction with the machine learning automation synthetic biology to give rise higher productivity of biomedical application higher productivity of bioengineering molecules now very two important section uh, that i wanted to make sure uh, before i will end the session that is artificial intelligence and machine learning there are two different approaches are there that is actually executed in the hidden layer like as i mentioned here hidden layer how this is actually working so one is the template based approach another is the template free approach. So let's talk about the first about the AI ML template based approach. The template based approach using reaction rules, that means thermodynamic rules, first, second, third law, or zero order, first order, second order reaction. The algorithm internally performs the four steps: like selection, expansion, simulation, and back propagation to explore the most putative possible chemical transformation. So, in in nutshell, what I would like to say: the recent template based approach translate actually bio translate. the precursor towards the target one so you need to know what are the basic precursor their structural orientation and then what kind of target will be are going to get so you can see that from this diagrammatic presentation so if you can find out the substrate information then you can easily find out the information about the enzyme class and that will give you what kind of product you can end up with whereas the ai ml template free approach is little bit retro approach the template free approach employing a machine translation concept the recent template free approach is that will allow to translate a target molecule to a precursor so first you have to identify what is your target molecule then you can carry out the positional decoding and that will allow to give rise the structure of the substrate the substrate structure could be stored in the zinc database it could be in a smile format it could be in a mold file so this is the way the how template free approach will be one one is the forward approach and the other one is the retro approach so now i almost come to an end of this lecture session so here i would like to mention there are a lot of ai tools which are available a lot of papers i have already mentioned in the reference section that will allow you to understand there are a lot of different algorithms deep learning artificial neural network or the machine learning they are put into step forward in the field of metabolic engineering there are a lot of responses are there a lot of different tasks needs to be performed like identify open reading frame annotate the open reading frame enzyme and pathway tree design and reconstruction followed by the pathway optimization simulation and also genome editing to knock in knock out or knock down certain metabolic pathways to alleviate the target product selection or generation and accumulation within the system similar way you can also able to merge or amalgamate the omic data set and outer detection where metabolic engineering could be get easily balanced and it will be participated in the double switch mechanism these are also different other tools those who are controlling the bio process they are controlling the optimization of the physical chemical parameters different algorithms are also there which are the part of the recurrent neural network also the convolution network of neural network system and these are also different ai tools uh, they are also getting participated in the metabolic engineering to uh, make the metabolic engineering more robust and more automated super automated towards the execution of the uh, the transformation of this big data set into a value added or the validated uh, reconstructed metabolic pathway synthetic non natural pathway including the information about different forms of enzyme classes 
So we come to a conclusion. So what you can gain when you are incorporating the artificial intelligence, machine learning, artificial neural network or deep learning in the field of metabolic engineering. That will clearly give you more better auto execution, super execution to predict or reconstruct the metabolic pathway. It will allow to reconstruct the different non-natural metabolic pathways as well by considering robust system modeling, de novo pathway design, phenotypic profiling, product maximization, by canning out four different parameters like tuning reactor condition, tuning genetic target identification, by following fetching new enzyme selection, native pathway interference. It can also allow you to identify different metabolites and precursor that will allow to carry out the template-based or template-free approach that will allow to find out the more robust metabolic pathway redesign and also different uh, information about the enzyme classes. It will allow to predict of missing enzyme or the enzyme which is not naturally working. Those were called the predicted enzyme or the missing enzyme. So these missing enzymes on the predicted putative enzyme can also be get evaluated with the help of the amalgamation of the AI with the metabolic engineering in near future. You can also able to predict the biochemical reactions considering the thermodynamic constraint and that is mostly considered and focused by the neural network. The DNN looks for the possible combination of the source and the same to predict reaction and that will allow to give you a more better reaction that could be possible to get functionalized within the active cell or within the chassis cell host strain. But as a future recommendation, still, as I mentioned, AI amalgamation with the metabolic engineering, system metabolic engineering do exist in the infancy. But if we could mention the hierarchy of, of need for uh, leveraging the machine learning in metabolic engineering following uh, the ML deep learning, basic testing, feature selection, simple ML algorithm to be get developed, the clear out layer detections, uh, like the hidden layer, which is functioning nowadays, that needs to be more advanced. And the proper simulation of the omic data set, uh, ontologies and database maintenance, upgradation, regular basis, and also followed by the final experimental design, automation, synthetic biology, how throughput analysis that will actually uh, allow to get more data set in the real life experimental design and experimental data set. So these are the basic ML hierarchy of needs that will make a more advancement in the field of metabolic engineering, get functionalizing better layout or better way forward. Similar way, um, as a future recommendation, uh, recommendation, I would like to mention like how you can switch over, how we can able to switch over from the AI traditional approach towards the AI pipeline approach that needs to be established uh, very near. I, to do that, I just try to make two different uh, statements. One should be emphasized on the traditional AI-based approach. That is the traditional metabolic engineering process involves a single reaction or react reactor uh, the researcher who is doing all the phases of project from the pathway choice to the strain building fragmentation and data analysis and machine learning. So it's quite uh, clear that a one person cannot perform all these different multidimensional tasks. So that is the lacuna of the traditional AI approach. That's why the paradigm needs to be get switched over to the AI uh, pipeline based approach. So what is the pipeline based approach? The pipeline approach instead focusing resources on creating a single flexible semi-automated pipeline consisting of different connected services. Multiple servers, multiple people, researchers, they are connected within these services. They have been working in parallel all together. Then these all data sets like MyoCAD data set, BioCAM data set, DNA services, high reactor operation, omics data set, ML data set, modeling, everything, genome scan model, everything will be get specialized they will be getting marched by the specialized team the pipeline approach favors the repeatability the data quality the quality data say the stream of data required by machine learning and artificial intelligence so these are the basic references uh, from where i have actually extracted uh, uh, very interesting reports very interesting data set very interesting diagrammatic presentation and giving them meaningful uh, out layout for this particular deliberation so finally, I come to a conclusion of my presentation. I would like to acknowledge Dr. Dharmeshwar, who is HOD of the Department of Biotechnology, BBPE College, Rajkot, for giving me this very ample, very uh, attractive platform to educate your faculty and participants. Organizing committee of AICT IST refresher program of Department of Biotechnology, BBPE College, Rajkot. 
I'd also like to acknowledge the Department of Science and the GIS University for their alliance and for constant support uh, to improvise myself as an expert, as a, as a resource person. And I would also like to thank all the all eminent participants on this online platform refresher program. Thank you very much. So this presentation will be uh, recorded version will be available in Neat Sciences channel that we have uh, continuing monitoring and maintaining. And this is a small group, including PhD scholar, MSc research project scholars, and MSc interns. Thank you very much for your great attention. I hope you enjoyed this session. If you have any question, I would be happy to answer. Thank you very much. <laughs>